Welcome back, Odoers. One important aspect of almost any business is correctly collecting, reporting, and paying taxes. Fortunately, it's all easy with Odoo and just requires the correct configuration. As taxation parameters depend on your company's country, choosing the correct country when creating your database is essential so that Odoo automatically installs the corresponding localization package. This ensures that your tax rates are correctly set up and can be integrated with the tax report. Many countries' standard form of taxation is the VAT, a consumption tax applied to all goods and services. This taxation is not a cost for businesses, but rather is collected on behalf of the government. Indeed, here at Bloom, we charge VAT on our sales, and we recover it from our purchases. And what about eco-taxes? We aren't going to cover those in this video, but details on how to handle them can be found in the online documentation, so be sure to take a look there. Now, let's take a look at our database. We'll start by going into the accounting app, and then into configuration and settings. And here we can see our default taxes. So these are going to be populated based on the company's fiscal localization. We also have the rounding method, which allows us to determine if the tax should be rounded on each line or if it should be summed and then rounded globally. Next, we'll take a look at our taxes by going into configuration and taxes. And here we can see a list view of all of our taxes and we see that some of them are active and some are deactivated. And we can easily change the filter here to see only sales taxes or only purchase taxes. Let's open a tax record and see all of the fields on it. So we have the pretty simple ones, the name, the description, uh, the amount, if it's active or not. But we also have other fields like the tax type. This allows us to specify if this tax should be used on sales orders and customer invoices or on purchase orders and vendor bills. Next, we have the tax scope, which allows this tax to apply only to goods or only to services, or we can just leave it blank to apply to both. We also have the tax computation. This determines how a tax is computed. If it's a fixed amount instead of a percentage, a group of subtaxes, or even a Python expression for those more complicated taxes that some countries or regions have. And below, we have the distribution for our invoices and refunds, since this is a sales tax. And here, we can determine which tax accounts should receive a portion of this tax and how much each account should receive. We can also set the tax grid to make sure that the tax amount appears in the correct place on our tax report. In the Advanced Options tab, we have even more options, such as if the tax should be included in the price, or if it should affect the base of subsequent taxes. So if a product has multiple taxes, you'll get a different total if this option is enabled on the tax with the earlier sequence, such as in the case of luxury taxes or environmental taxes. There's also the include in analytic cost option in case we want to include the tax amount in the analytic account of any line that uses this tax. And finally, we have the tax group field. This is the name of the tax group that is displayed above the total amount line on an invoice. This is the group category that the tax belongs to. And by default, there's going to be one group for each rate. So you mentioned changing the sequences of the taxes. How can I do that? So changing the sequence is actually really simple. If we go back to the list view, we can see that each line has a handle here. And by clicking and dragging, we can reorder our taxes to determine their sequence. Let's now look at where we can set our taxes on a product record. So we can easily access them by going to the customer's menu and then to products. And let's open our garden gnome product. And we can see that we have our customer taxes field where we can add one or even multiple taxes on the sales side. And then in the Purchase tab, we have our vendor taxes. And note that the taxes set on the product record can always be overridden by a fiscal position. So be sure to check out our video on fiscal positions to learn more about that. 
Now that we understand all the configurations surrounding taxes, let's see them in practice. From the accounting dashboard, we'll create a new invoice for our friends over at Acres Lawn Care. And they've been telling us that they can't keep our fantastic garden gnomes on the shelf and they need more to keep up with demand. So one final option for setting a default tax instead of setting it on every single product is to set it here on the income account. So we can see, if we open this, that no default taxes are set here, but that's okay because the tax that we set on the product record is going to override whatever is set here anyway. Let's go back to that invoice using the breadcrumbs. And the last thing that I want to point out here is that in the journal items tab, we have the tax grids field. Since we see a value in the tax grid field here, we know that the tax report will include a journal item as soon as this entry is posted. Well, that's all for this video on taxes. Be sure to check out our other videos and documentation for more information. This has been your pal Dal. I'll see you in the next one.